The exact number of Ding Dong Sevens produced in secret factories in the deserts of Syria by Jehovah's Witnesses was never known, although estimates range from 25,000 to 30,000. They were moved by train from al Ragar along the Euphrates River to the port of Latakia, and from there shipped all over the world during 2022, along with 10,000 tons of dried apricots, 60,000 tons of raisins, 4,000 tons of pistachios, and 8,000 tons of shelled almonds. The Ding Dong Sevens were designed to act like humans in every way, with two large exceptions. They couldn't smile, and they couldn't bend their legs. Almonds and pistachios, Edgar Malroy told me once, were the only nuts to be mentioned in the Bible. I told him this was perfectly possible because the pistachio originated from Persia and Syria, and the almond was the oldest, most widely cultivated uh, and extensively used nut in the world. We talked about food often. Ding Dong Sevens couldn't bend their legs. They couldn't walk, in fact. Many years later, during the final stages of the Holy War, Edgar Malroy told me how his metaphysical betting business had begun. He had just been kicked out of Tewkesbury University, had absolutely no money and ended up just wandering about London, eating food out of dustbins and things. Then one Sunday, he passed a church on Pancras Road. Why he went in, he couldn't remember. Perhaps it was to take a piss. Anyway, Edgar Malroy went in and ended up sitting at the back. There were 30 people there. A good turnout for those days. The priest was shouting gently about the Son of God having risen from the dead. Quite without thinking, Edgar raised his hand and asked a question. He said, How much? And everyone turned around. The priest was so flustered, he read out the same part of his sermon again. When he got to the bit about the Son of God being raised from the dead, Edgar asked his question again. How much? And everyone turned around again. The priest shook violently for a moment, looked at the floor of the pulpit, and looked Edgar straight in the eye. Wh what do you mean? You believe that the Son of God rose from the dead, Edgar said. Yes, said the priest, pushing his glasses up his nose. Well, all I'm asking is this, how much? How much are you willing to bet that this is so? Edgar asked. The priest sank down into his pulpit. He looked to his left and seemed to be about to speak, then stopped himself. Three times he seemed about to speak, but held back at the last minute. The congregation kept turning from the priest in the pulpit to Edgar in the back row. The priest sank lower and lower into his pulpit until he was almost out of sight. He turned to face the altar, he prayed. Then the priest stepped from his pulpit, walked down the aisle, ignoring the stares of his congregation, and began fiddling around in, his po in the pockets of his robe. When he reached the back row of the, of the pews, of pews, the priest took out his wallet and gave Edgar Malroy £85.50 in cash. It's all I've got on me at the moment, he said defensively. The priest then pushed his glasses up his nose again and walked briskly back to his pulpit, clearing his throat a few times as he did so. He began his sermon again, but no one was listening. His congregation was queuing up in the aisle to show Edgar Malroy how much they believed their funny little god guy had risen from the dead. Later, when the collection plates were brought out, no one in the church had any money left. What happened that first Sunday was repeated every week. It became, Edgar admitted, something of a ritual. The priest felt obligated always to give Edgar more money than anyone else, the poor nut. This had been going on for about a month when a bishop appeared at the service one Sunday morning. Edgar was sure that the bishop was going to ask him to leave, but instead he wrote out a cheque for £1,000, shook Edgar's hand and enthusiastically thanked him for allowing him to demonstrate his faith in such an open and candid manner. "'You must be from America,' he said, smiling. "'Sort of,' Edgar said. "'I'm refreshed,' said the bishop. "'And I'm richer.' Edgar replied. After that, Edgar began to take, uh, take, um, to make more. Uh, sorry, to make serious money. More money than he knew what to do with. Three months after walking into that church for the first time, Edgar Malroy bought it and turned it into the first metaphysical betting shop. The priest and the congregation kept on turning up every Sunday until they ran out of money, as if nothing much had changed and nothing much had. The church was merely under new management.